Good afternoon and welcome to the Fund Forum here in the Middle East. Uh, my name is Peter Duke from Fidelity Worldwide Investment and I'm delighted this afternoon to be joined by Michelle Carnu, the uh, chairman of the Carnu Group. Michelle, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. As a, a seasoned investor and uh, in the Middle East and long standing, maybe if you could just give us um, your perspective on the investment opportunities as you see them currently in the region. Uh, this region is, is a very um, fluid region in that uh, you don't know what to expect next. Uh, some things are drastic and you can feel it, and other things are a bit more subtle. Mm -hmm. And uh, unless you have your, uh, your uh, uh, proverbial finger on the pulse, you won't be able to figure it out. Um, I think the obvious thing everyone is talking about in this part of the world in terms of investment is the boogeyman, which everyone talks about, which is IS, or ISIS, mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. the hell they call themselves these days, which is something to, to pay attention to. Yeah. The other thing, which of course is uh, the, the elephant in the room, which again, but unfortunate, so fortunately everyone wants to talk about, which is the issue of oil. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing, which is significant, is the issue of the cooling between the United States and Iran and the repercussions of that mm -hmm. happening within our region. Those are the major things. And then of course you have the more, uh, very um, local issues that are happening internally or within changing of laws, changing of construct of ideas, uh, uh, is there a construction boom, is mm -hmm. there, et cetera, et cetera, and so on and so forth. Um, starting off with the more larger scale, uh, what's going to happen with Syria, Iraq, and uh, its impact on the, the Gulf region? Mm -hmm. And I'm talking, I, I'll focus on the Gulf region because that's my area of knowledge. Yes. Um, we don't know. To be honest, I have absolutely no idea whether uh, IS will continue to be there uh, six days from now or six years from now. I have no idea. Whether it be cons uh, accepted as a country eventually or not. So I can't uh, sit and tell you this is, going to ha this is going to be a place and how much that's going to impact. Because um, if tomorrow IS is recognized as a country, then there's a business opportunity to go, uh, to, be, to happen over there. Uh, is uh, Syria going to be shrunk in size? There's also another business opportunity there, uh, or investment opportunity. And how is that going to impact Saudi Arabia, uh, Iran, and, and Iraq? Also could have a, a business opportunity. So I don't know what's going to happen regarding that. The price of oil, which is a more, um, I'd like to say easier, but it's not, but a more uh, obvious uh, issue is the, the price of oil has dropped from 115-ish down to about 40-ish, 50-ish, mm -hmm. somewhere in that region. The last time we had something of that significance was the, the, after the collapse of the Lehman Brothers in 2008-9, mm -hmm. where the price of oil did come down and then had a drastic bounce yes. uh, immediately after that. Um, but again, the issue is perception, because the time it took to recover, uh, this has been much longer, but there was a recovery. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing uh, I think I've always asked, Question, uh, I've always questioned is, um, in 2009, uh, late 2008, 2009, you had a total meltdown in the world uh, financial sector and subsequently the economies. And so you could see the price of oil careening towards mm -hmm. where it did because there was a reason that happened. We didn't know whether the economies were going to survive, mm -hmm. let alone prosper. So the price of oil will come down. Now we're still talking about small blips in terms of uh, economic downturn, whether it was in Europe, whether it's States, whether it's China, India, etc., they were not significant, and yet the price of oil had this massive correction. I think uh, I'm not. Uh, while I hear a lot of economists talk about it being a uh, uh, demand and supply issue, I think there's a lot more to mm -hmm. do with than that. Um, what? If I said what I, what I think, people will say, "Oh, you're a conspiracy nut." So I'm going <laughs> to keep away from that. But I will state that I don't believe that the price of oil is going to stay where it is. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to go up and significantly up because there are people who benefit from mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I usually, um, my, my professors used to tell me, follow the money. And the, for me, yes. I'm following the money. Yes. And the money says uh, a lot of people have lost money. A lot of funds have a lot of money on the side. That is a, a, a hedge against uh, currencies, a hedge against um, uh, markets. People will come into it as a commodity mm -hmm. and it'll pick up. And then, of course, people are saying that well, there was a whole commodity uh, implosion. Again, I think it's the same thing, but oil is something more uh, prevalent and mm -hmm. in our face, mm -hmm. so that you can see it a lot more. How many people talk about the price of copper, steel, etc., but yet they do affect us? Yes. But the price of oil affects this region a lot mm -hmm. more. In essence, I will state that in excess of 80 
percent, if not more, but let's say 80 percent, mm -hmm. of the economies of the, the Gulf relies on oil. Mm. Okay. So if you have that um, argument with oil prices, you know, maybe going up in due course, but at the moment at low levels, I mean, what do you see as the impact for economies in the GCC, uh, and actually how successful have they been in terms of diversifying the youth of Um Can I get back to that one after talking about yes. the last one, which was the issue of Iran? Yes. Uh, because that also comes into this one. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the, the issue of Iran coming in. Uh, as uh, The moment uh, Iran and the U.S. sign off on the, uh, sorry, the parliament sign mm -hmm. off on this thing, which is most likely going to happen, uh, from, a, from this part of the region, politically it's unfavorable. From a financial point of view or business point of view, at least for the UAE, it's gonna be, it could be very favorable, mm -hmm. specifically Dubai. Um, but that also comes to the issue of the linkage of the price of oil coming down because they will say, well, tomorrow Iran will be able to tap into it. I think it will take months, if not years, mm -hmm. if tomorrow this is signed before the refineries, before the uh, exploration, before... Yes. They fix all of what they have to move from 900,000 barrels, I think, with currently, yes. to about three to four million. Mm -hmm. It takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. So, but the markets are already what you call discounting. Yes. They've already uh, factored it in, so you can see the price of oil coming mm -hmm. even lower because they're saying, oh, tomorrow Iran's going to come on board. Between activating it and opening the spigot, uh, it takes a while. To, p to the point you're talking about, um, which was uh, regarding the effect of the price of oil on the economies and how have the governments reacted yes. towards it. Uh, initially, you had a lot of governments brush it off uh, within the regions, the ones who could afford mm. it, uh, Saudi Arabia, um, uh, probably uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the UAE, and Kuwait would be the ones which are significantly able to, say, withstand a few more hits. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones who, are take, who took a massive hit, obviously, would be Bahrain and, and Oman, in terms of the GCC. The, qu the question is, how is it going to affect the economy as a whole? Uh, we are a, we are economies here based that are really reliant on fiscal spend. Fiscal spend, whether it's in infrastructure, whether it's in the oil and gas field itself, whether it's in healthcare, whether it's in education, all of it usually stems from fiscal spend. And in addition to fiscal spend, then you have the private sector coming in. When the f unlike in other parts of the world, when the government enters into a sector. In the rest of the world, private money filters out because they get afraid. Mm -hmm. Here it's the other way around. When the government enters into a sector, that's when you see private money <laughs> going into the same sector too because they're thinking, if the government's sure of it, then yes. we're sure of it. Okay? But the fiscal spend that has had to have to come, had to come to a slowdown because there's no choice. If I, my income is, coming, is becoming less and less, my spend is going to have to come less and less. But the question is, are they going to stop the infrastructural spend? The answer is no. The question, the question is, um, my time horizon, which could have been six months, a year, mm -hmm. 18 months, might stretch out 36, 48, 72. Mm -hmm. But I'm still going to spend because I have no choice. Um, the other issue is, um, will it be an, uh, taken as an opportunity by the governments to restructure uh, both internal and external, as mm -hmm. in my external investments yes. and my internal investments within mm -hmm. the... Uh, the answer is the smart governments will do that, and those who want to have a, take a blind view of the things will not. Um, I will not speak on, that beha on their behalf because that's an issue for the governments mm -hmm. to do. But for me as an investor, are there going to be opportunities for me to invest in this region? And the answer is yes. And if the Iran-US thing comes to fruition and all parties and I include them talking about the, uh, the west mm -hmm. coast of the Gulf, agree that this is a good thing, then there will be a natural, mm -hmm. what you call it, bumper mm -hmm. uh, crop, because you will see a lot of money coming in from Iran into this part of the world, specifically to, to Dubai. Mm -hmm. uh, because there is a door of opportunity for the investors, uh, sorry, for people who have their money locked up in Iran, uh, Iranians I'm talking about, mm -hmm. not, uh, not yeah. external, who will take that money, bring it here to Dubai, into different sectors to ensure is everything fine because there's arguments today at the, uh, I was listening to the Republican uh, debate where some of them are with bravado are saying, the moment I become the president, I will nullify this uh, deal. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of Iranians who would also think, okay, let's take some money out. This is security. If the person X, whoever wins the Republican side and uh, eventually wins the, if 
we never know. Wins the nomination to be uh, nominated to be the candidate, uh, the, sorry, the uh, president of the United States, and doesn't negate, then that money flow will mm -hmm. flow back into Iran, mm -hmm. and then Tehran will actually become uh, an area of investment opportunities. Mm -hmm. If it does, uh, so if that person does become that and does close those deals or push back sanctions, then at least some of that money that came out will stay in here, mm -hmm. and it will circulate within the economies over here. So it's it's going to be a positive. So your potential could be a very mm. positive thing for whatever happens here. I'm hoping that business sense rather than political decisions wins mm -hmm. at the end. And if you actually look at that opportunity um, of money coming in, is that targeted at um, private markets and private opportunities? I mean, where do you see almost the balance with you know, access and that opportunity but you know, limiting your risk? I mean, where do you see the, 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 the best? Uh, Usually, upside. usually when money flows from one place to the other, it usually flows in in, um, in a certain manner, uh, and I don't know if a way another way around that. First flow goes to banks. Mm -hmm. Second flow goes to properties. Third flow goes to businesses, and if you are looking long term, it goes to manufacturing or industrial mm -hmm. uh, based warehousing you know, and such long term uh, plan. I'm think, I, I think it will take the same um, flow. Uh, monies will come into the bank. If they're not stopped, mm -hmm. it will go into properties. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, what type of properties, I don't know. Uh, as in, is it going to go into luxury properties? Is it going to go into medium uh, income mm -hmm. uh, properties? I don't know. Is it, uh, from there, it will go into businesses. See, the thing is, for a lot of Iranians who are set up over here anyway, they have their businesses. So the question is whether they will come, will come into the properties, into the business, or because they've circumvented that, go straight into the mm -hmm. business. So I, I can't tell. The, the, the only question would be whether it goes from a normal trading business into long-term uh, manufacturing, warehousing, mm -hmm. etc. That will be interesting to see. All right. And just actually one final question, which you, you highlight politics as an issue, oil prices. The other thing that a lot of people talk about is China and the slowdown yes. in China. How does that impact the Middle East in, in some respects as it is still an emerging market? But your sense on, you know, will we see any repercussions if there is a sharp slowdown in China here in this region? Because China, unlike uh, a, democ a democratic country where you have um, uh, political uh, levels, uh, and or concern about certain requirements mm -hmm. from uh, lobby A or lobby B. They run the shop like we run shop mm -hmm. here. <laughs> so I want to do something, I'm mm -hmm. going to do it. I want to slow the economy, I'll slow the economy. I want to increase the, econo the speed of the economy, I'll increase the speed of the economy. Um, China, as a growth, uh, sorry, it, it, there's two, two issues of growth. There is the um, normal day-to-day -day economic growth, and then there are strategic growth. Mm -hmm. So. From a normal day to day, uh, as things heat up in China, because they can react immediately, they can either uh, lower, um, uh, so you, uh, cause the, uh, bring in the factors that mm -hmm. will lower this heating so that it cools down, even though it means externally it looks bad, mm -hmm. uh, or if it think doesn't care, it can heat it up again. So that aspect, there is a certain amount of economic uh, factoring to go to. You come to the strategic. The question is, can China afford not to continuously buy commodities, mm -hmm. the different types of commodities? Can it strategically afford to turn off the tap and say, I'm not going to work in Africa or the Middle East or any of the other places they work with? I mean, for example, the, one of the big things that they have right now is in uh, Pakistan, where they're building a massive corridor over there. Uh, the question is, just because they have created a, an economic slowdown, will they stop? working with in that corridor to pa Pakistan to get the commodities that they mm. want to get to. I don't think so. Mm. I, I don't think that, that, that they are uh, that, that desperate. Uh, I th sorry, I think that, that they are desperate to get their hands on those minerals. So therefore, I don't think they're going to take, uh, uh, allow economic issues to slow down mm. their strategic mm. issues. The same thing if you look in East Africa, West Africa, uh, um, I'm not sure about North Africa, uh, and to, to, to a certain degree, Latin America, mm -hmm. and in, even in their backyard, uh, which is Australia and uh, and such. They have that. It's not going to slow down from a strategic point of view. So the question is whether you are going to be, I mean, 
part of me wants to laugh. <laughs> in, in that you see, uh, I, recently I was wa I was reading in the, the FT, and it said um, we can't trust the numbers of chi coming out of China. I'm thinking for ten years they've been giving you these same numbers, and you had no problem. Mm. You you went with them. Now when it doesn't suit you or is causing an issue, now you can't trust them. I'm thinking, come on. Mm. Uh, there's a certain amount of um, I don't want to say hypocrisy, but there's a certain amount of uh, uh, game playing that's mm -hmm. happening. I don't know who's benefiting out of it, but as I said, I follow the money, and for me, this is a very simple thing. If someone's making some money out of this thing, and someone's losing some money out of this thing, I'm following the one who's making the money. Yes. Yes. Michelle, I think we have to leave it there, but a wealth of opportunities, a wealth of insight. Thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate um, it. Thank you very much. Enjoy the conference. I hope Thank so. You.